give God a praise. Amen. For it's another day's journey. Amen. He's allowed us to be here. Amen. So certainly we welcome you this morning. Amen. To unity. Amen. Church of God in Christ. Amen. Our morning worship services. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be alive. Amen. Somebody. For so many have went on. So many have went on to be with him. Amen. He's on this morning, last night. But he suffered the, amen, the, the death angel to pass over. Amen. So we're glad, amen, to be here. My soul loves me. My soul. Declare 
that the wicked shall cease from trouble. Amen. And the weary soul shall be at rest. Oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's give him a praise. Let's give him a praise. First verse to the third verse. Praise ye, O Lord. Praise, O ye servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forever. From the raising of the sun unto the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. Coming to you with the New Testament. First John. I mean St. John, the first chapter. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made. That was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of me. May the blessing of the Lord add a blessing to the hearing and doing of his life and word. At this time, I'll be reading the statement of faith. We believe the Bible to be the inspired and only infallible written word of God. We believe that there is only one God, eternally existent in three persons God the Father. God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We believe in the blessed hope, which is in the rapture of the church of God, which is in Christ at his return. We believe that there is only, only mean, that the only means of being cleansed from sin is through the repentance and faith in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. We believe that the regeneration by the Holy Ghost is absolutely essential for personal salvation. We believe that the redemptive work of Christ on the cross provides healing for the human body in answer to believing prayer. We believe that the baptism of the Holy Spirit, according to Acts 2 and 4, is given to believers who ask for it. We believe in the sanctified power of the Holy Spirit by whose indwelling the Christian is able to live a holy and separated life in this present world. Amen. Good morning, Unity. We've just taken this pause in the service to acknowledge life, as our pastors say. We're acknowledging the birthdays that we have on this morning. We thank God for you who are celebrating birthdays on today. You may be celebrated on last week or in this upcoming week. We just thank God for you. You know, when God created you, he had a purpose for your, for your life. He had planned out your days before one of them came to be. So just remember that you are special and truly special in God's eye. We thank God that he made you. You have brought such happiness, laughter, and joy into the lives of the people whose path has crossed. So on behalf of our pastor, Anthony Rogers, First Lady Charlene Rogers, and all the members here at Unity Church of God in Christ, along with your family and your friends, we're wishing you a happy birthday. And our prayer is that, the, that on your day is filled with joy and peace. We pray that the Lord keep you free from illness and sadness. We pray that the Lord keep you strong and give you a good strength to make good decisions throughout the upcoming year. So on behalf of all of us here, again, happy birthday and God bless you.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. 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 Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We have a tendency to allow our emotions tie into our praise. But oh, if you would allow just for a moment of time, even when you do not see your way through, or even for that moment where you feel that everything is okay, there is a moment where if you keep a living, you'll find yourself still guessing, what about tomorrow? How do I make it? But when you make it into the house of the Lord, in the house of the Lord, in these walls is hope. In the house of the Lord, there is a opportunity. And we have been quarantined, but we know that the same God that rests within the facility also is in your heart and into your home. Amen. And so we celebrate you on this morning. Lord, we thank you on this morning. Lord, we praise you at this moment. Lord, we are excited that we have a mind that want to stay on you. So we glorify you, we praise you, we lift you up for this time. We're just taking a moment, just a brief moment within our service. We uh, never want to overlook those who have made sacrifices and we have uh, adopted uh, as they call the new norm. But yet the same God that was there before the pandemic, same God that was there before some of our anguish and anxiety. And so we still acknowledge who he is. We give him all the praise and the glory. But we take this moment, we want to tell you those uh, that are within our community, those who are hanging on, thank you, thank you, thank you. Unity, thank you for your commitment to God. Unity, thank you for your tithes and your offering. And to our friends within the community, thank you for how you have allowed God to use you. We do not overlook that. And to those who feel that you might not have enough, we don't praise God for what you have. We praise God for what he can do. And so we thank you for the mindset that you also would like to contribute to God. And to our YouTube family, thank you. Facebook friends, thank you. We don't overlook anyone or any situation. If you would stand within the uh, auditorium, then we're asking you those right where you at, put your mind on God. We just want to do a brief prayer for your sacrifice. Heavenly Father, we thank you at this moment. We thank you for those who have sowed a seed. We thank you for their giving. We thank you, Lord, of how you have watched over them. Lord, we pray right now that you continue to bless them, continue to protect them, Lord. Put them within your pavilion, Lord. Hide them, Lord, from what the adversary plans. Lord, we do not look on how much they have in their pocket, but we look at how much they love you in their heart. And so, Lord, we ask our prayer of protection over each and every one. Lord, to those that have went beyond, you know their heart, you know what situation they're in. Lord, man does not know the need. Man just sees and sometimes focus on the want. But Lord, we pray right now yes. that you meet every need, every situation. Lord, go into the hospital right now. Go into the homes of free recovery right now. Go into those places of isolation right now. Let them know that they're not alone. Let them know that you still have them within your arms. We will give you all the honor. We will give you all the glory. Yes. Your son, Jesus' name, amen and amen. You may 
be seated. Uh, we thank God at this moment again. Thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you for uh, how you have joined us this morning. And we came to lift up God. We came to praise his holy name. We came to lift him up. We know at this moment we might not uh, have everything that we need, but the little that we have, we want to give it on to God. The little bit that we have, we're going to give it over to God. Amen. As musicians get ready to play, I am uh, deeply impressed of their commitment. And even though you might not see all the members you normally see, they are committed unto God. Amen. And I thank you for their commitment because each one of us has to work out our own soul salvation. Amen. This is something that we cannot buy. Or give. Each one of us have to work out individually our own soul salvation. At this moment, at this particular moment, we're going to have a selection for our, from our own Unity musicians. Can we say amen for them? Amen. Oh, can we do a little bit better than that? Can we say amen for them? Amen. amen and amen as they come at this time. Selection is another one of our favorites. It's called the Anthem.
time of the turmoil. We have rose to the occasion, even when we cannot see what the future holds. Tomorrow was not guaranteed, and neither do we understand how we're going to make it through today. But as you stand just a little bit, normally I would read the scripture in prayer, but at the moment and at this particular time, I want to pray first, then we will go into our brief pause before the scripture. Just right where you're standing, right where you're at at this moment, you could be walking, you could be home, you could be at your kitchen table, even driving in your car. The spirit that was played was from the heart of each instrument. They uh, have, over the years, gotten a custom of playing for you who sits within the seats. But through this particular year, through this particular incident that has crippled so many and had others grieving because of the loss of loved ones, through it, we've seen a growth. God uses all things. And I've seen the growth when they begin to play unto God as if he's sitting right in front of them. They play, Lord, for their own souls and they appreciate that you enjoy the melodies, but they're praying unto God. Heavenly Father, we thank you at this moment. Lord, we ask you before we ask of anything that you would forgive us, Lord. Lord, we pray at this particular moment of time that you would open up our ears and our hearts. Because then, Lord, if you have forgiven us and then allow our minds and our heart to be open, we can receive the word. But Lord, we're asking to receive the word in an honest state. Lord, I pray that if the word chastise, that it only prepares them for tomorrow. Word chastise and only secures them for today. Lord, I also pray that those who have made a determination to listen and to use every word, that it would inspire them to do just a little bit more for you. It would inspire them to hold on just a little bit longer. It would inspire them, Lord, to put all things in order and to make all things right. Those, Lord, those are, there are those that have been holding on for many of years. Those who have given their life to Christ. Those who are looking for the other side. Those who have lifted up their eyes to the hills. So Lord, I ask that the word of God comes to encourage them right now. Let them know that you still love them. Let them know that they're still within your arms. Let them know that they still have your victory. Ah, Lord, because you're going to another place that you prepared for our hearts and our minds and our souls. You said when you get there and everything's in order, you would come back and take us with you. So, Lord, we pray that the word encourage us that we might be able to last until you come and get us. Lord, let your word go out now. Let it be a difference, Lord, in the minds and in the hearts. Let them as they rest, that it comes upon them like a dew. This is in preparation of their souls. So we give you all the honor. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. In thy son Jesus' name, Amen and amen. Since you have been obedient, let me quickly, I will read the King James Version. I'll be coming from John, St. John, John, St. John chapter 14. I'll be using verses 1 through 4. I'll be reading the King James and then I'll quickly get through the International Version. As the musicians stay close, I like a little bit of what you played earlier, and as soon as I get through, I might ask just for a little bit more of the key of E. I'm going to remember that. The key of E. St. John chapter 14, St. John chapter 14, verse 1. 
Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Verse 2, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Verse 3 says, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. And I will receive you unto myself. That where I am, that ye may be also. Then verse 4. And whether I go, you know. And the way, you know. International version, international verse, St. John chapter 14, verse 1. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. Verse 3, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thank you for standing for the word. You may be seated just before I go in to the sermon. I'll be sharing the title with you in just a second. I'm going to ask the magician, just a couple of minutes, just briefly, just briefly, give me a little bit of that. You said the key of E. Give me a little bit of that key. Hey, hey. Trouble. Temporary trouble. 
Life, life, life. Life has a way of testing our resolve. Life situations, life as we say issues, these situations either activates our belief or as the ability exposes our vulnerability to begin to panic. Life constant changes. Life constant changes makes it difficult to feel secure. We even develop sayings. We say things like, enjoy it while you can. We'll say something like, nothing lasts for long. We even has the audacity to tell people, as they were getting life, soon the honeymoon will be over. Life uncertainties, these life unknowns, these life unpredictabilities, has the tendency to cause us to worry. It wasn't that long ago, think about it, it wasn't that long ago that we were worried if we would have provisions. Some even went out and purchased pallets to try to secure those items. It wasn't long ago, it wasn't long ago we were worried what would happen to our churches. Some began to wonder if the doors were ever open again or what we would do because of isolation. Even us that are here at this moment, it wasn't that long ago. Oh, let's be honest now. It wasn't that long ago that we worried who would be the next president of the United States. Matter of fact, we as a society were so concerned and so distressed that we even had the churches and even some called evangelists praying to the same God but for different candidates. Life has the ability to make us worry. I want you to understand the definition of worry. It's a very simple, none need to be complicated. It's simply to cause anxiety. But here's the thing, it causes anxiety about either actual problems or even potential problems. Understand that we worry about either actual problems or even potential problems. We, we worry, we worry, we worry about actual problems, but we even worry about potential problems. It is estimated, I want you to understand this, it is estimated that we spend at least two and a half hours a day worrying. Two and a half hours a day worry. Based on our average lifespan prior to the COVID, it was roughly six and a half years of our life that we dealt with worry. Imagine that, six years of your life, six plus years of your life gone that you'll never get back because you're worried. There was a book and a study done by seniors over the age 70. And they asked them several questions. And the one common theme that came back was written as to give the next generation advice. And they simply said, I wish I would have let go of the things that I worried about. They simply said, I wish I would have allowed those times of things that I could not fix. For those who are believers, it was those times that you gave it to God and then picked it back up. Yeah. We have a tendency to work. We find ourselves in situations that cause us to worry because we're unable to see how to fix it. Uh -huh. We find ourselves in situations to worry because we feel overwhelmed. We find ourselves, we even become helpless because we feel sometimes isolated. We even worry about those who are isolated. We find ourselves worrying over situations when we feel we don't have sufficient resources. We even find ourselves concerned because we feel that we have insufficient funds. We even begin to self-examine ourselves. We would say something like, I should have done this. We mentioned other things, I should have done that. 
than we even say if I would have only did so and so. You see, when we worry, we're worrying because we believe that we are in trouble. Life, life, life has a way of making us think and believe that we're in trouble. But oh, I am so glad. Matter of fact, in the time of distress, I can even think of the situation and it brings a smile to my face because I'm so glad. I am glad because I know. I know that trouble don't last always. I, I can get a little bit of a praise going on within my soul because like they told me, just keep living. And I've seen what God can do. And then they told me what he did for others. Hey, yeah. they told me he'll do the same for me and he'll do the same for you. Yeah. Can't you look back over your life when you thought it might be all over? Yeah. But look at you now. Those that are still with us, those that are still able to praise the Lord. Yeah. At the beginning of March, we thought it could be over. But oh, look at you now as we prepare for Thanksgiving in November, you still in the land. God has made provisions for you. Now, uncertainty, despair, and anxiety is only temporary when you trust God. Uncertainty, despair, and anxiety is only temporary when you when you, oh, I want you to get that. When you yeah. trust God. Yeah. Our text, our scripture, John chapter 14, verse 1. Our text takes place in a room where there is uncertainty in it. A room crowded with unpredictability. A room that is crowded with apprehension. In this room, it is crowded with weariness. This is our text uh -huh. at this moment. Our text has within the room despair in it. Yeah. It is a room congested with hopelessness. In this room, in our text, it is, has anguish that is on the walls. A room congested with just more distress. Our text, this text, St. John chapter 1, chapter 14, verse 1, takes place within a room that is filled with anxiety. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. A room that is filled with worry. In this room, concern has just showed up. And in the room, it feels that easiness, uneasiness has closed the door. This is our text. Our text begins with the efforts of Jesus trying to calm the disciples' distress. Jesus takes the effort. He's trying to appeal to calm the dis disciples' agony, their agony and uneasiness. He takes the time and the effort to calm their confusion. Here they are within this room. All texts, this text right here, these scriptures show the love that Jesus had for the disciples. You have to understand this text, these scriptures displays how Jesus wanted to relieve the disciples' anxiety. He just didn't want to take it out of the hearts, but he wanted to remove it out of their minds as well. Pastor Rogers, me, myself, I am concerned. I am concerned because there is for some, even now, there is for some and there was for others just a few, few seems like days ago. There was a feeling of uncertainty even within our country. There was a feeling of unpredictability within our communities. A feeling of weariness even within our homes. Uh -huh. Just a little while ago, there was a feeling of apprehension even within our churches. I 
am concerned. I'm concerned there is still for some and there was for others. There is still a feeling of despair within this country. Hey, I, I, I am concerned because the feeling of hopelessness, even within our own communities. Yeah. I, I'm looking and I can feel the feeling of anguish that rides sometimes within our own homes. Then I'm hearing and seeing the feeling of distress that is sometimes still plaguing the churches. I am concerned and bothers me that there is still for some and then for others there was a feeling of anxiety that is still in this country. A feeling of uneasiness that still resides in this community. There is still a feeling of worry even within your own home. Yeah. I am concerned. There's a feeling concerned within these churches. I am concerned. I am concerned. I am concerned that you might not know that in your time of distress. I, I am concerned that you might not have a clue that Jesus is there and he wants to calm your anguish. Uh -huh. I, I am concerned that you might not know that your time in your time of despair, Jesus wants to relieve all of your depression. Uh -huh. I am concerned that you might not know that in your time of confusion, in your time of confusion, that there is a God that has the son that is in Jesus that would like to ease your own uncertainty. See, this text, this John chapter 14, verse 1, shows Jesus' love. It shows Jesus' compassion. This text displays how Jesus reaches and reacts towards the one he loves. This text shows me and you how Jesus loves us so much that he wants to hang, hang us through our anguish. Wants you to know that Jesus wants to reduce every anxiety that's in your heart or in your mind. I want you to understand that Jesus wants to reduce the uncertainty that's within your heart or in your mind. I need you to know that Jesus, hey, thank you, Lord, wants to reduce the despair that's in your heart and in your mind. Our text, this John chapter 14, verse 1, this text is, opens up with the emotional despair of the disciples. The disciples are concerned about the uncertainty. The disciples are sitting there in anguish. The disciples has just found out from Jesus himself that he would be leaving them and that they would not be able to go or even follow him. This text, John chapter 14, begins with Jesus meeting their emotional needs of the disciples. See, this is the same Jesus. This is the Jesus that they left their families for. This is the Jesus that was sent from God. This is Jesus the holy and power for one. Have you met my Jesus? Just Jesus is the one that heals the brokenhearted and the bodies. This Jesus, the one that can take all of your troubles away. This Jesus is the healer. Hey! At Unity Church of God, this is the Jesus we refer to as the miracle worker. Don't you know you've heard me say before that Jesus is the divinity in the human flesh. This is the Jesus that would be leaving them soon. And so they were anguished. They were had anxiety that felt like despair was closing in on them. See, you have to understand that the disciples felt safe when they was with Jesus. The disciples felt that there was a plan for their lives when they were with Jesus. The disciples felt that the Holy One, this man that was sent from God, 
He can heal anybody when they're in the presence of Jesus. Ah, but what happens when life changes? What happens when life situations ain't the same? What happens when you get some information that wasn't the same for you? How, how do you feel when you relied on or taken or when something you relied on is taken from you or removed? How, how do you feel when there doesn't seem like you have a job? How do you feel when your health doesn't feel the same way it used to? How would you feel if all the money that you had saved began to dwell in the way and now you don't have too much? Yeah. How do you feel when your family is not in the same order and loved ones have moved on and situations have been resolved? How, how do you feel in that moment of despair? Uh -huh. I wonder how do you feel when you face with uncertainties? Yeah. How do you feel when you are faced with the unknown. See, I understand. I understand what it feels like when you're notified that someone you love will be leaving you. I understand you might have a feeling of uncertainty because of your apprehension of tomorrow. I understand that you might be feeling a despair because of your feeling of hopelessness. I can relate and understand. You might even have anxiety because of the uneasiness of your future. The disciples, the disciples within our text are trying to process the information that they just received. They're trying to process what Jesus is saying. They're trying to process what is taking place. This the same Jesus. Jesus, I thought you loved me. Jesus, I thought if I gave my life to you. God, if I came to church and down on my knees, that everything would be okay. Why does it still feel that I have despair? Why does it feel that my heart feels it broken? Here we are trying to process the information that we have just received. Some are dealing with the simple fact that the check that we were depending on seems that they might not never issue anymore ever again. Some of us are dealing with the stay of eviction. It appears that we had an opportunity, but then it appears that the government, the governor's memorandum might not get extended. Hey, what do you do? How do you feel when the results from the hospital or not what you was expecting. Hey, how about the pain in your body that you were praying that God would ease? But it seems it's becoming more persistent. Those that are dealing with the children, the inconsistency of the different districts and the school boards. How do you feel when you're not sure if your child would ever enter school before? Yeah. What about the unemployment opportunities? Yeah. Feels that it might be narrowing and even your current employment might be in jeopardy mm -hmm. due to the second wave of the COVID-19. How do you get through this despair? Yeah, yeah. You see, these situations can cause trouble within our hearts. This is the text. Our text is what Jesus is speaking to the disciples. At this moment, he says, let not your heart be troubled. It is in the first verse of chapter 14 of John, Jesus said, if you believe that there is a God in heaven, then I also want you to believe on me also. He says, I'll be your peace of mind in the midst of the turmoil. He says, I'll be your comforter if you remain faithful. Jesus is instructing the disciples not to be troubled within their hearts. Jesus is instructing the disciples that if they, if they, if they put their faith in him, uh, he would relieve them of their worries and anxiety. Jesus at this moment is instructing us not to be troubled within our hearts. Jesus is instructing us, me, you, he's instructing us that he's able 
to relieve us if we put our faith in him. He'll take our worry and our anxiety away. We, we know that God is our refuge. In the time of trouble, God is our refuge. Psalm says that he will hide us in his pavilion. Ah, Psalm says he would hide us. See, our hope and our belief goes beyond this world. No need to try to understand or fathom. It goes beyond this world. This is what he tells them within the text. He tells them, not let your heart be troubled. Tells them, if you believe on God, then believe on me. And then he goes on to explain that it's beyond the understanding of what we see in the present. He says that in my father's house, in my father's house, there are many rooms. It is in this verse. It is in verse 2 that Jesus used the words many rooms. Identifying that there is room for everyone. You don't have to worry about your pedigree. You don't have to worry about any degrees. You don't even have to worry about your stature in life. There is room for each and every one of us. You don't have to worry about no savings plan. You don't have to worry about if somebody has to leave you or give you some kind of introduction. When he paid his price on the cross, he gave opportunity to each and every one of us for you to come to the throne of the grace. He used in the words many rooms. He believes that if you abide in him, Allow him to abide in you. Yeah. Jesus gives us comfort knowing that if we simply believe, that if we simply believe, yeah. we have the opportunity to spend eternity with him. It is at this point within our own text that we can confront our own personal anxieties. It is at this spot within the verses of the scriptures that then we can reach out to our communities. It's at this moment that the anxiety within our communities, the anxiety within our churches, the anxiety within our homes can be resolved. Not only will we have comfort in our future, ah, not only will we have comfort in our future, that's the eternal life, but God gives us the comfort of the present. He sent a gift, a comforter when Jesus left the Holy Spirit. Says if I was surrendered to the gift, if I was surrendered to the gift, it would lead me and it would guide me. Need you to understand that in our text, at the time the disciples did not quite understand. They did not understand Jesus' departure. But I need you to understand. I need you to understand that Jesus' departure was for your benefit. Amen. Jesus' departure allowed us to have the advantage Amen. to go to our heavenly home. Jesus' departure began for him to prepare that we'll have a place that we can reside with him. It is at this junction, it was at this moment that we had refuge. This is the part I need you to get that in this verse of our text, he says that if I go, I go to prepare a place for you. But then he says, I will come back. Hey, thank you, Jesus. He said, I will come back. Thank you, Jesus. You're not alone. He said, I would come back. Thank you, Jesus. It is at this part of the text, these scriptures that we take this great comfort. We take comfort in knowing that Jesus wasn't just leaving, but he promised to return. We take great comfort knowing that Jesus just didn't left, leave, and walk away. I know some of us still broken because we've had family members that have walked away. I know some of us have damage because we've had loved ones that have walked away. But Jesus made a promise that he will return. And he said when he will return that we will reign with him. Yeah. Jesus stated, I will come back. See, I need you to understand there is no need 
for apprehension because Jesus said, I will come back. There is no need to be weary anymore because Jesus said, I will come back. Yeah. Don't you worry about life uncertainties. Yeah. Jesus said, I will come back. I need you to hold on because that hopelessness that you feel, you need to let it go because Jesus said, I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I need you to allow the feeling of anguish to leave you because Jesus is coming back. Jesus is coming back. There is no need anymore for feeling the stress. Jesus is coming back. He said I would come back. I understand that these words sounds good, but if you understand my Jesus, then you would allow the uneasiness to go because Jesus is coming back. You don't have to be concerned about what's taking place next because Jesus is coming back. There is no more need for us to work. Huh? Because Jesus stated he would be coming back. Jesus will be coming back. Jesus will be coming back. Jesus will be coming back. Won't you get the other part in his conversation? He said, not only am I coming back, but he says, and also, don't you worry, I got you. He says, I'll take you to be with me. Ah, thank you, Jesus. He says, I'll take you to be with me. Thank you, Jesus. I'll take you to be with me. Thank you, Jesus. I'll take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. Don't you know that we'll be with him now? The comforting passage of scripture is for the believer because you have to understand it's about eternity life. And that's why it's important for me for you to understand the process of becoming of a believer. I would all of you would be believers. To the believers, I need you to continue to hold it on to God's unchanging hand. Jesus has made a promise uh, to take us back to a place where God has prepared for us. Here we are in that moment of anguish. Here we are in that moment of distress. Here we are in that moment of worry. And all we can see is in front of us. Don't you know there is something bigger than our own understanding? There is something greater than what we can put together. There is something more inspiring than we can even see within our own lives. Let me share a little story with you. There is a scene that takes place. There is a building that is on fire. And these flames have consumed the lower floors. The flames are creeping up towards the upper middle of the building. There on the top floor of this building, there is a person that is trapped. Out of nowhere, a superhero shows up. They begin to look a little bit closer and the man squint and he wonders, that looks like the Black Panther that just emerged. Black Panther is able to gather the person but due to the fire intensity, they are forced to jump from the top of the building. Here that person was in all of their trouble. Here that person was in all of their anguish. And before they know it, there was something that appeared to them as a superhero. It gathered them up. And looking back over their past, thought there was no need to retreat. So they took another leap towards their future. And as they jumped off, of the building as they were floating to the ground. The person begins to look at the Black Panther. Then the person begins to look at the ground. And then the person begins to realize their condition. And the person says to the Black Panther that I am frightened. I am troubled. I am distressed. But oh, the superhero, the Black Panther not missing a beat. He replied, if I just saved you from a burning building, what makes you think I will let you go while I'm carrying you to safety? Huh? I want you to get that. If God can deliver you from a burning hell, what makes you think he would leave you 
before he placed you safely within his mansion. Yeah. If God can deliver you from a bird in hell, what makes you think he can leave you in your time of distress? If God can deliver you from a burning hell, what makes you think he will leave you or forsake you not? What makes you think he will leave you or forsake you not? What makes you think he will leave you or forsake you? What makes you think he will leave you or forsake you? What makes you think he will leave you or forsake you? It was the songwriter, the Reverend Timothy Wright, who put together the song, Trouble Don't Last Always. Yeah, he put together the song, Trouble Don't Last Always. Yeah. See, within the song, we are exposed to some statements. He begins in one of the verses and said, I'm so glad. Yeah. He says, I am so glad yeah. that trouble don't last always. He says, trouble don't last always as a statement to your spirit. He says, trouble don't last always as a conviction to your heart. He says, trouble don't last always as a prophecy to your heart. Goes on to say, it may not come when you want him. So he said, he may not, Jesus might not show up when you want him. But oh, like a superhero in the time of distress, he's right on time. He says in the times of trouble, he said I found him to be a friend of mine. In the time of distress, I found him to be a friend of mine. In the moment of my anguish, I found him to be a friend of mine. He says in times of trouble, I found him to be a friend of mine. Another part says, in the times of storms, clouds rise. In the times of storm, clouds rise. He says he will be there. In the midst when you saw no future, when you saw no hope, at the midst when you thought you were in despair. Hey, 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 hey. Thank you, Jesus. He says all of your burdens. He says, I know, I know the Lord will help you bear. All of your burdens, the Lord will help you glad. And then he began, he began to finish it up by saying, I am so glad. Yeah. He began to finish it up in the course by saying, I am so glad. He began to give aspiration, inspiring us by saying, I am so glad. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad? Hey. Yeah. He said, I am so glad that trouble don't last always. 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 Don't last always. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, Isaiah chapter 41. Verse 10. Isaiah chapter 1, 41, verse 10 says, So do not fear. Hey, for I am with you. Yeah. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10 says, So don't fear, for I am with you. He says, Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. Yeah. He says, I will strengthen you and help you. I would uphold you with my righteous hands. Hey! Trouble don't last always. Trouble don't last always. Hey! He's right there when you need him. I begin to think about what the Reverend Wright was saying. And it seems my mind said, well, maybe they don't understand Reverend Wright. Maybe we have a different generation that is in distress. Maybe we have a different generation that is concerned. Maybe we have a gen different generation that is in anguish. Maybe the young generation, because they see the country, they're broken hearted of the uncertainty. 
Hey, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Maybe you was not there to understand the Reverend Ryan. Let me share you with Kurt Franklin, another artist. Has a little song called The Storm Is Over Now. The Storm Is Over Now. The Storm Is Over Now. He says, No more cloudy days. They're all gone. I feel like I can make it. I feel like I can make it. I feel like I can make it. He said, The storm is over now. Yeah. He said, no more sleepless nights. No more worrying and walking the room. No more heartbreaks. No more heavy concerns. Begin to speak into your homes right now. Anguish has to leave. Begin to man in your homes right now. Distress has to leave. Begin to command in your homes right now. Worry, you gotta go. Hey, 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 hey. Need you to perform an eviction. Hey, when you get home, put the stress out. Yeah. Where we can't ride anymore. Hey, 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 hey. Yes, Uneasiness has to leave through the window. Hey, hey, thank you, Jesus. 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 Says if I walk alone, I'm not on my own. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. If I walk alone, I'm not on my own. No, it seems that you're all by yourself. But oh, Jesus sees everything that you're going through. Because the storm is over now. The storm is over now. The storm is over now. Hey, 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 hey. God knows. God knows. God knows. Everything that you're going through. God knows. God knows. Everyone is your disappointments. God knows. God knows. God knows. Every tear that you shed down your cheek. God knows. God son to be beaten. He allowed his son to be abused. He allowed his son to go through that because that's how much he loved you. That's how much he loved you. That's how much he loved you. I don't care what other people say. That's how much he loved you. You don't have to worry about me and my judgment. That's how much he loved you. That's how much he love you. In the time of your discomfort, in the time of your distress, I don't care what it is, if God would allow that because he loved you so much, 
some of the things that we worry about, we got to let go. He's prepared a place. He prepared a place. You've heard me state before, let me share with you. God, if, if you feel you want to heal me on this side or in, in the match, and I'm okay. I'm okay. Sometimes we our perspective, we miss out in our perspective. We don't quite see in our perspective. We don't quite understand, but we're here for just a short time. It might feel like to you that life continues to go on, but let me share something with you. The days may seem long, but let me tell you, the years are very short. The days might seem that they continue to go on and on, but the years are very short. You might feel that this day will never end. Issue after issue, problem after problem, but oh, look around, the years are very short. Tomorrow's not promised for any one of us. Tomorrow's not guaranteed. Our years here are very short. I want you to know that if he can save you from a burning hell, yes, that he has you in his hands. Yeah. That he has you in his hands. If you would stand right where you at, I want to take a moment just a prayer of encouragement as well as an opportunity. You might be in a place right now in your heart or mind that you are excited that there might be a future. But then there's some of you that are concerned that after all of this glory, after all of this praise, tomorrow I'm going to wake up and there's still no change. After all of this excitement, after all of this praise, tomorrow I wake up still not sure about the job opportunity. After all of this excitement, I'm still afraid I will become sick. Heavenly Father, I thank you. I come to you humbly right now. I ask you, Lord, that you would touch each and every one's mind right now. Begin to work within their hearts right now. Let them know that you said to them, let not their hearts be troubled. Lord, I want you to know that you have the power to ease the conscious state of the mind. Give them comfort right now. Let it be something phenomenal. Dispatch angels out right now. You love them so much that you allow your son to die on the cross so they did not have to open their eyes into hell. You love them so much that their name can be written in the Lamb's book of life. But you told them that they have to believe. You told them they have to stand with you. You told them that even through this anguish, this uncertainty, that you would come back. And when you come back, you would gather them up. So Lord, we're praying that they hold on. We're praying that they sustain. We pray right now that they do not lose focus until you come back to get them, Lord. Lord, to those who do not know you but would like to give their life unto you, Lord, we ask that you would receive them. We ask when they say, please forgive me of my sins. We ask when they say, God, make me new. We ask when they say, I believe that Jesus died on the cross. We ask when they said, please forgive me of my sins, that you would receive them in the family. Lord, I pray right now, go to the hospital. We have those that are in the hospital. Lord, right now, send the angels to go beyond where we can go. They have corridors and blocks and provisions that doesn't allow us to be at the bedside. But oh, you have an awesome house. You can send the angels right now. Let them know that they're not alone. Let them know that they're not forgotten. 
Lord, begin to work thy will be done. Lord, there are those right now that are afraid of the steel of the pandemic. They are afraid what would happen next. There are those that feel isolated, out of touch, and have not seen anyone. Lord, go to them right now. Comfort them. Touch hearts, Lord, that they would call them. Give them a vision, Lord, that they will, from a distance, drop by and see that they're okay. There are those, Lord, that the adversary is using the school system to pressure them. Give them peace in their home. Give them comfort. Lord, give their children an education that's beyond the understanding. Give them a peace and order, Lord. Lord, we pray for the homes right now. The adversary has used this to break up homes. Divorces are increasing, but we speak in binding right now. We speak harmony into that home. We speak love into that home. We speak peace into that home. We speak understanding into that home, Lord. In thy son, Jesus, hey, 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 hey. There are those that just doesn't feel well in their body. Strengthen their body right now. Ease the pain in their body right now. Give their mind a peace and give them rest. Give them comfort. Change the atmosphere within the room. Strengthen their faith. Give them that hope. Encourage their minds right now. Let their hearts stay on you. Prepare their souls. Lord, we have loved ones who have now came home and tried to recover. We pray that every blood cell, every molecule gets put back in order. Let their God, let their body regenerate right now. Give them a healing power right now. Lord, we pray over them right now. Let thy will be done. Let thy will be done. Let thy will be done. Lord, we have some that are tears. Tears are still running down their cheeks. We have some that their hearts are still broken. Their loved ones are no longer here with us. Lord, we pray that they're with you, but give us the comfort right now. Let us know that the life that they are living has not come to an end. Let them know that their world still goes on and you still have a mission for them, Lord. By their distress, their, their frustration, their uneasiness, give them hope and let them ride on your wings, Lord. Where they cannot walk, be their steps. Where they cannot go, guide them. Where they cannot think clearly, under, give them understanding. We will give you all the praise and all the glory. Now, Lord, we pray a prayer of protection over each and every one right now. We bring harmony back to the relationships. Harmony back to the homes. Harmony back to the communities. Harmony back to to the country. Harmony back to the churches. It is thy will, Lord. 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 And we pray right now. Lord, we pray that when your son died on that cross, we use his name, thy son name, that holy one, that miracle worker, Lord. We pray with thy son Jesus' name. And we thank you, Lord, for what the things that you've already done. We have not overlooked that. We thank you for the provisions. We thank you for sustaining. We thank you for protecting. We thank you for guidance. We cannot see, but we know that if we walk with you, our future is better. So we speak life into our future. We speak life into us right now. Lord, we give you all the honor. Not man, we give you all the glory. Not man, we give you all the praise and all the worship. We pray in thy son Jesus' name. Amen. And unity remember, unity remember, God knows exactly uh, what you're going through and what you are dealing with. You're not alone. You're not alone. I'm going to take a few minutes. I just want to take a few minutes to thank you. Thank you, Unity. 
you have exceeded uh, myself and First Lady Rogers, our expectations. Uh, thank you, Unity, uh, Unity, you have no idea. Unity, you have no idea how much you have touched us by your kind, uh, your kind heart, uh, your willingness to give. Uh, we were not expecting, uh, neither did we feel demanding of the love that you have shown. We are taken back and we are so thankful for what you have done. Uh, I wanna thank you for your gifts. I wanna thank you for your offerings. I wanna thank you uh, simply for your support. To us, it's not about the exact amount, but it's about the love that was shown. Uh, for us, it's about the commitment uh, that you have. And you did not have to do anything, but you showed such love, you showed such care. And we are greatly, greatly thank you for that. Thank you for participating uh, in the Zoom calls. Uh, we uh, truly enjoy uh, the Zoom calls and we thank you for everyone who's participated. Thank you for the drive-by. That was uh, amazing how you showed your love, uh, not only to myself, but to First Lady uh, Rogers, how uh, you were willing to come by and share your love. Thank you for all the gifts, all the gifts and the offering. God knows your heart. And I want you to know it's not about the amount. I want you to know that if you're unable, I want you to know that from your heart, if God has touched your heart and asked you to be a part of what you have done, uh, we receive the love. Thank you for a phenomenal anniversary. Thank you, thank you so much. We receive your love. We receive your love and that was awesome. Uh, we want, again, can't words, uh, it's trying its best, but cannot express the love that you show to myself and First Lady Rogers. And I want you to know that everything that you have done, everything you have done uh, has been received and we are enjoying, and that is from our hearts. And we pray that God continue to bless you. Well, at the end of our service, at the end of our service, you often hear me say what I say unto one, say to one another. I'm going to ask you to keep looking out for one another. I know you have the love because I've just experienced and you just showed. So would you look out for one another? Would you call one another? Would you reach out to one another? Make sure that everyone's okay. In this time of unrest, in this time of uncertainty, I want us to come together uh, being unified. So now we are unity within the community. And I thank you. I thank you not only for your obedience to God, but again, for the love that you share. Well, at the end of our service, we raise our right hand and we say, what we say unto one, we say unto all. Watch. I want you to watch out for each other. And we pray. I want you to pray for one another. And then Pastor Rogers, I'm asking you to be smart I want you to be wise, but during this period of time, I would like for you to wash your hands. Thank you so much, Unity, for your love. Thank you so much to those within the community. Thank you so much to those within our Facebook family for the love that you sent to us. Thank you so much to our YouTube friends. You are phenomenal, and we do not overlook any of the things that you have done for us. We love you, we love you, we love you. And Unity, I look forward to seeing you real soon. Thank you again, Unity, for your love. On behalf of Pastor and First Lady Rogers, thank you for joining us today. Our announcements for the week are as follows. On Tuesday and Friday, join us for the weekly prayer call at 6.30 p.m. Wednesday, meet us back here at 6.30 for Bible study with Pastor Anthony Rogers. Hello's Pantry will be distributing free groceries on Saturday, December the 19th from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. We are asking for cash donations to purchase food items through December the 12th. You can make your cash donation via Givelify or Cash App at dollar sign Unity Kojic Seattle. That is dollar sign Unity Kojic Seattle. If you would like to donate food items, 
please reach out to Lady Rogers for a list of items that are needed. To stay current on these and upcoming events, we invite you to subscribe to our Facebook page and sign up to receive our email updates. To join the Unity Kojic family, go to unitykojic.org. That is U-N-I-T-Y-C-O-G-I-C dot org. And remember, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. May God bless you and have a great week.